on this investigation of evidence paranormal. The team returns to the famed McPike Mansion. But this time, could they be in over their heads? In 1869, architect Lucas Feifenberger built a three-story, 16-room brick mansion as a country retreat for its new owner and his family. And it was this new owner, Henry Guest McPike, local businessman and politician, who appropriately named it Mount Lookout. Henry, well, let's just say he was a man very involved in politics. He served two terms as mayor, first from 1887 to 1889, and then again from 1889 to 1891. But it was his involvement earlier in 1858 when he showed his support for his good friend Abraham Lincoln by bringing the Lincoln-Douglas debates to town. In addition to having his own home vineyards, he perfected his personal grape variety, the McPike grape and began a thriving business from a cellar. Posing for a photo with his three sons is 81-year-old John Mountain McPike, Henry's father, who passed away in Henry's home in 1876. But it was a few years prior to the mansion's build that Henry was first faced with burying two of his children in Alton Cemetery. But if that's where they're laid to rest, then who do the broken, dislocated children's headstones belong to behind the mansion? As for Henry himself, it was April of 1910 when he was to eventually pass away in his home at the young age of 85. This structure, which still stands today, is known as McPike Mansion. In the years that followed, the mansion had become Brown's Business College, and later another owner, Paul Lashinger, allowed people to live there for rent. Abandoned since the early 1950s, the house suffered from disrepair, weather damage, as well as vandalism. Presently, the mansion is owned by Sharon and George Lutke, who bought it in an auction in 1994 and have been working very hard to renovate the giant back to its original condition. With the support of tours, campouts, and other festivities, they're able to keep the building and its history alive for future generations to appreciate. But you gotta admit, when you consider the mansion's history, it really shouldn't be all that surprising that people have seen ghostly apparitions over the years, especially that of Paul Ashinger, seen watching the property from an upstairs window. Today, the mansion receives visits from curious tourists, historians, and even paranormal research groups. On November of 2012, my group, Evidence Paranormal, visited the mansion to perform our own investigation to see if we could find and document activity for ourselves. And much to our surprise, we did. Make it light up again, please. Mm -hmm. 
What you heard was a REM pod's alarm being triggered by something unseen. What happened next left me speechless. When I count, that was me sitting down. When I count to three, please make that light up and make a sound at the same second I say the number three. Ready? One, two, three. This is awesome. Yes, this is great. She likes you. Do you like Jay. Nathan? Oh my god. The spirits replied her question was validation, but they also had a sense of humor. Can you make that go? What was it, beep beep? Da, 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 da. That was my watch. Oh. Those were my keys. Can you make the rim part go? Da, 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 da. Dun, dun. Or even just a two, dun, dun. That's good. <laughs> the response for Mary's request for shave and a haircut from whatever we were communicating with left us all laughing and amused. But it was this photo she had taken earlier outdoors that left us all puzzled. Could this be the face of an apparition trying to manifest itself? We think so. So, I'm just really eager. I really, you would really so convince me if you make that light up right now to let me know that it's all right, that you, you personally want us to come back. Can you make that light up? What happened next occurred near the end of our investigation. Listen closely to the background after I make my next statement. Give it everything you got, sir. The sound of something being slammed came from immediately outside of the entrance of the cellar. We tried to figure out what made the sound, but we couldn't determine where it originated from. Could this have been the ghost of Henry, Paul, or someone else trying to get our attention? Because it was very late, we decided to end our investigation. However, we knew that wasn't all the house had to offer. The next year, June of 2013, we returned. Because light emitted from our sensory devices cannot be recorded by our infrared video, we brought more full spectrum video which can see it. This time, we could only hope the spirits would leave our equipment alone so as not to corrupt our SD chips like they did the year before. This time, we were better prepared with more camcorders, an obelisk, an army of EM pumps, as well as a geophone to detect vibrations and footsteps in the floor. After we stepped out of the cellar to set up other video equipment, the room was paid a visit from a dear friend from our last year's investigation, McPike Mansion's own resident bat. Sometimes investigating can be uneventful and other times downright frightening. In either situation, your job is to remain professional and not let your emotions cloud your judgment. However, this time we feel was different. Mary was picking up readings on her K2 EMF detector only a few feet off the floor next to her right leg. In an effort to debunk the occurrence, we swapped our K2 out for another one to see if it would react the same. And it did. As an investigator, I checked for readings high and low around the room, but didn't find a trace of anything. My suspicions were starting to flood in. 
but I knew not to jump to conclusions. Um, I'm really so sure. It's expected of you to dissect the situation in order to debunk or explain whether an experience you are having is actually paranormal or not. Usually, there are things of influence you'll find to explain things away. But in this case, all roads led us to believe that this just might be real. It's not doing anything. She's holding that one. Trade. Because the signal was only two feet off the floor, I suspected that it could possibly be one of the spirits attached to the broken headstones outside, or maybe even one of the Mephite children. But I still felt I needed more proof that this was a child. If that's true, can you really try to light that up, please? Just touch it. Just then. Whoa, did you see that? One, five. Oh, they're both doing it. They're all doing it. Two. Was that one? Yeah. Yeah. They're all, all three, three of them at the same time. Finally, 10 to 15 minutes later, after repeated requests for it to better interact with us, my proof arrived. On the count of three, light it up, please. Mommy? You looking for your mommy? Any other time, I would have been excited, but... This was the spirit of a lost child. God love you. All I could do was kneel down and say a prayer for this little one. After performing an inspection of all of our external video equipment and downloading their information to our main computer, we began the investigation again with another EVP session. Well, hello, somebody says something. The responses we were getting during this session were random flashes and temperature fluctuations. At this moment, my Melmeter's ambient temperature detection was responding to a drop from 65.7 down to 61.2 and 61.3. Is there anybody in here? We know there is. We respect you. That's why we're here. Very good conversation with you last time. And we would like to have it again. We were talking to you about bringing music. Do you remember? We showed you pictures of yourselves. Could what was to happen next been their way of reaching out to us? Like the investigation last year, unknown sounds were coming from the next room. We exited the cellar to try to trace where the sound was originating from.
It seemed to be coming from our gear's staging area, where all of our unused equipment rested two rooms over. Making sure what we heard was not the result of a natural occurrence, we stopped and listened before we moved any further. Just then I heard a faint static sound coming from our prep room table. Of all four of our walkie-talkies which were all off, one of them apparently was turned back on. Knowing this could have been just an electronic fluke, and that there was nothing to prove here, without revealing the footage after the investigation, I decided just to return back to the cellar. Here now, from the cellar doorway, is the hallway camera's perspective, from the moment the sounds began to when the sounds stopped. As you can see, it took a few seconds for us to notice it. But let's be serious. Is it a mere coincidence that the sounds in the hallway ceased as soon as we reacted? Not likely. Earlier that evening, because of laws restricting our team from entering the building, the owners kindly set up some of our video equipment on the second floor. With our geophone, I named Big Step, for obvious reasons, to detect vibrations in the floor, a K2 to detect electromagnetic frequencies, and a digital voice recorder to catch EVPs. They placed them in a doorway for us in hopes of catching evidence we could use. And believe it or not, they did. The thump sounds, we think, could have been dripping water located out of our line of sight because it repeated every few minutes, almost on cue. One hour, 12 minutes later, they redirected our camera to look from the second floor up the staircase to the third. And again, they caught something. At 9.22 p.m., they removed all of our video equipment. As we stood in the doorway while our gear was handed out to us, we all experienced together the undeniable smell of barbecue. I, for one, hope we didn't disturb anybody's dinner. Of course, every investigation should have their own standout moments to look back on and laugh about. We certainly weren't no exception. Because we were sitting in practically total darkness, it was very difficult to see exactly where the bat was flying. Yes! Check 
cut the ceiling. He's over there. There he goes. He's flying all over the place. He's mad. He's not there happy. He he's silent. Oh, see, there he is. I wonder if this is doing it. What? Making him mad? He wasn't in here before. Where'd he go? Finally, thank goodness, <laughs> he left. There he goes. <laughs> he left. He went out the door. Out the door? Yeah. <laughs> we got something we can laugh about. <laughs> yeah. The bat and the belfry. Not long after that, Jay started us off on another EVP session. Is there anyone down here with us that wants to say anything to us? If so, you can try to manipulate this box right here. Hopefully, we can get a word in and talk to you. We really just want to help, help you and maybe even help the house if it's possible. Did you mean to say placebo? And if so, why? Sarah? Okay, here's a name we haven't really used. Paul, are you here? Paul Lashinger was the owner of the house during the 1930s and 40s. His apparition, as well as Henry and many others, have been seen throughout the house. Sarah, are you still on the second floor? Can you come down and talk to us? talk to us, make a noise up there so we can hear it. Near the end of the night, we were given the honor of being accompanied by none other than McPike Mansion's owner herself, Sharon Ludke, for one of our final obelisk sessions. Ah, well, good evening to everyone. Henry, Sarah, Mary, Jenny. Quite often, Mary and I would leave to tend to other equipment whenever activity would stop. Okay, so can you guys touch the rod again, or can you say something so that we know what you're saying? Upon returning, we were always updated on whatever we missed. It said uh, eat earlier. Jay and I were sitting in here. And I was uh, a good distance from it. And, and it was interesting because 
It said eat before I talked about the camp out. Yeah, like, right before she started talking about the camp out, it said eat, and it was like, it was like, and I looked at her and I said, man, it's like it, it's like it knows what you're gonna say. <laughs> I think what's going on, it has something to do with the barbecue we smell. So Henry, the question is, do you really want me to start a, a vineyard? Whoever's here, we don't know which, which individual you are. But this is Henry. Can you make the alarm go off? You're right there. You're right next to it. All you have to do is touch it. There's two antennas. Those things with those pointy things. silver sticks that are hanging off. Can you touch those? And they're only doing the two at the top. It was getting so late, it seemed the spirits were losing interest in communicating with us. So there was a tunnel. I've been told that by, uh, so, so you so know, so yeah. actually this guy, I don't know if this man is still alive or not, but he's told me that he was a teenager while Washington told him that there was a passageway that he was afraid to go into because, um, he was afraid of a bond. And several people have, other people have said there was a passageway. Is there anybody here that has knowledge of that? Come on, make them all light up again. You can answer. Was this a place where slaves could come to escape? Underground, like the underground, underground railroad. At this point, Sharon was so tired, she told us she was going to go home and lay down. Despite getting good hits on several of our devices throughout the evening, we were saddened upon reviewing our audio files that we hadn't caught a single EVP all night. During the use of our obelisk, we collected words like eat, possibly in relation to our mentioning barbecue, and the word tree in regards to Sharon mentioning planting in her front yard. And last but not least, lay, because she had mentioned she needed to go home and lay down. Coincidence? Seconds before turning off the obelisk and leaving, I asked out loud if any spirits that were present would like to say their name. Not hearing anything, we packed up and departed. One week later, as I was inspecting our equipment at home, I activated the obelisk and discovered there on the screen was a name left in the device's memory. Okay, here's a name we haven't really used. Paul, are you here? Now do you believe? <laughs>